Okay, now uh, let me introduce you our presenter today. Uh, as you seen from the introduction slides, uh, unfortunately John Cray cannot be here with us today. He had to travel on a business uh, at a short notice, but we are very fortunate to get Matt Haranhans to fill in up for him uh, at this short notice. I'm sure many of you know Matt. Uh, Matt has been working in N. Charles for nearly 20 years and he has been working in a number of roles at N. Charles Interactive. He managed the APEC services team for many years before moving to focus on the Asia sales. He currently split his time between supporting the N. Charles Interactive New Zealand sales team and also working with me in the transition roles in the Asia. So uh, let me hand over to you, Matt. Thanks. Uh, more, thanks, Ronnie. Many, many thanks. Uh, so uh, thanks, people. Um, <clears throat> as Ronnie said, yes, stepping in at short notice for, for John Cray. So I'll do my utmost best to portray it in the manner that John would be proud. So today we're talking about how to really create more opportunities within your own uh, client base and, and reseller channels. And we're going to concentrate on two products within the NGRS Interactive Portfolio. The first of those being a, a very new uh, application called Touchpoint Attendant. And the second part of creating more opportunities around the application we refer to as CP or more correctly communications portal. Communications portal has been part of the product portfolio for some 20 years. So apologies. Uh, so communications portal as mentioned, yes, has been part of the in-house product suite for more than 20 years and there'll be a number of you on this call who are very, very familiar with communications portal and its capability. But I just really want to reiterate the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the use of these types of tools to help you create more opportunities within your own organisation. So yes, reflecting on the first component, that being the recently released Touchpoint Attendant, uh, this is an application that is targeted uh, at some uh, the, the telephonist or operator, front office, or, uh, operator, console, uh, attendant roles within any organisation. And as in most organisations will tell you, that role is a very, very significant one. And as you can see from a number of comments on this slide here, uh, the role is taken very seriously uh, because the person really does have a significant influence on the people that they're communicating on a very, very regular basis and in lots of cases on the very first time basis that organisation talks to with with, with a potential customer. And so to be able to ensure that that person has the right tools at their disposal, that person needs to understand that they also have a responsibility in facilitating uh, the, the, the role as perceived by the organisation that they work for. And how do you make sure that they are capable of facilitating that particular role to the utmost of their ability? And you want to make sure that the interaction is very personal, uh, have information available to them about previous uh, contacts or communications from the person that they're now talking to, whilst also getting information with, from within their own organisation. So knowing uh, who is available, uh, has this person spoken to them previously, is that person still available, is there others who are in the absence of the primary person available to take that call. So sharing presence information and getting quick visibility uh, of known points of contact. And in the absence of all of those types of things, uh, offering options to be able to get hold of either the primary person or other people who may be able to facilitate that. And that might not necessarily through the voice interaction, it could be through an extension of instant messaging or emails or transferring to other known numbers associated with that particular user. And at the same turn, uh, if, if you can imagine uh, the destination person is busy, can you prime them for the call that they're about to receive? Are they willing and able to take the call that they're about to receive? So making sure that the attendant themselves has the full control and, and, and capability to be able to make sure that they can handle this call in the, in, in the most appropriate manner in the first instance. 
And thus by doing so, you're creating a great level of productivity and efficiency from someone within that role. And as a result, you really are empowering that person to be successful in the role that they, that, that they do. And by creating those efficiencies, you've now got hopefully a, an extension of time uh, in uh, that person's role because they're actually being able to deal things so quickly they've got time to facilitate the, all those other areas that that role actually requires. So the way that we've done that is delivering what we refer to as touch point attendant. Touch point attendant has been uh, available in, in two iterations since we have released it and we've released it in conjunction with Microsoft and so the term there we've seen is co-engineered so it's not just a product that's for Microsoft it's a product done with Microsoft so that's a significant statement on its own and the reason that we've had two two versions of the product if you like is that the Skype for business uh, application has always been an, an, an on-premise uh, available telephony suite and in more recent times Microsoft has announced their cloud PABX or their online version of uh, Skype for Business and both of those things give you slightly different uh, behaviours or it's different technologies but irrespective of the customer's use of the Skype for Business platform, the Touchpoint Attendant Console can be used in both of those environments. And when Microsoft released their Cloud PABX technology very, very recently, we followed suit immediately with the release of our own Touchpoint Attendant Console for that particular flavour of Skype for Business. Significantly also is that this is the first time we've been able to introduce a client-side application only. And so what that basically means is there is no server-side component. It really is just an application that was run from the operator's uh, PC or workstation. But it takes control of all of the things that a traditional Skype for Business client would do, but tailored in the way that it's for high high volume, but by also giving absolute core control, the ability to be able to search directories, see instant presence integration, but for someone who is tasked with dealing with calls in a high volume and dealing with them in, in a very, very quick and efficient manner. Okay, so what is Touchpoint? attendant actually look like. So you're seeing there on a, this, a screen of what the operator, a typical operator partway through their business day would, would, would be looking at. You can see there that there is a, uh, a, a very clean uh, user design, lot, lots of clean white space and the reason for that is that we're trying to really only show the operator information as they require it rather than clouding or cluttering the interface to have all options available to them, it's really only presented uh, as they are um, either handling the call, making or taking their own calls so that, uh, the, that the interface remains very, very clean and hopefully very, very easy to learn and to use as well as giving them a, a, you know, a very fun and modern looking application. <clears throat> The reason it's uh, so clean like that is that it's also been engineered to be able to uh, be driven from the operator's you know, uh, mode of preference and they can be complete keyboard users or they can use a combination of keyboard and mouse uh, but making it very, very simple for them to be able to use the application the way that they, they choose to use it themselves. You see there there's a whole use of colours to indicate different, in this case, call cues that have come in. So this particular operator, my, my demonstration user here, has got uh, a number of different business units within the organisation that she's answering calls for. And there's a lot of information here as to the number of calls handled that she's handled at a personal level. There is information there about the number of calls that she's handled from different business units, so clear identification of those business units. So as she answers and takes calls, she's clearly answering on behalf of the organisation or the business unit that that person is calling about. And there's a little bit of personal information there also as to the number of calls that she's made herself, be it inbound, outbound, transferred. She has a complete visibility of all of her 
in this case her <laughs> contacts information uh, as you would expect to see inside the Skype for Business client themselves. So all of those uh, tabs are related to tabs that already reside uh, within Skype for Business. We are just populating those into the Touchpoint Attendant application so that the Touchpoint Attendant is really the only application that the operator need, need worry about. What you see here is uh, a, a call currently in action and then another another call queuing. And we've tried to adopt a really a, a gamification type of process. So on, on the left hand side, you've got what is currently uh, in, in queue uh, or, the, or the operator is yet to be dealing with. In the middle of the screen is sort of the current action or the activity that the uh, operator can do or needs to do. And on the right hand side, bl blank at the moment, but as we go through, I'll show you a, sh a short animation, I'll show you some visibility of the, the right hand side. And that's really calls that have already been dealt with and are pending the next subsequent action. As you can see from the middle of the screen there, in this instance we've got uh, Libby, our, uh, our telephonist, has, has taken the call. You can see as you follow my mouse on the right hand edge here, that automatically we're creating visibility of the, the destination or the transfer destination that this particular person has dealt with in the past. So we're creating visibility, so uh, for, for ease of, of continuity that the operator themselves need not know the customer personally, but they can automatically see that this person has called into the organisation before and historically been dealing with these particular people. In this instance, a couple of different people in our organisation. Once again, we're getting immediate presence information displayed through both text and through colour. The call control aspect is sits and resides here in the middle of the application and you can see there is a, there is a number of different things uh, to, to be able to uh, assist the attendant in uh, making the right decisions. They can simply transfer the calls to the most appropriate person, they can perform you know, a supervised transfer, they can launch an instant message from the attendant console which will present the Skype for Business instant messaging window or should the contact store have the email address, we can also launch a, uh, an email from the uh, attendant console application as well. What's happening on the left hand side is that whilst this call is taking place, we've actually got more calls sitting and waiting in the console queue to be delivered to this particular person. And you'll see momentarily that as calls age, there is a, there is a grading or a colour grading scale to indicate the prioritisation of the incoming call. As you can imagine in a high volume uh, to if in a situation, you will have one to many calls that will reside here on the left hand edge of the screen. Okay, so the active call this window will display, it's got a lot of information about the caller, so we're sourcing that from the same areas that the Skype for Business application uh, itself is taking data from. Uh, the calls ringing in the left hand side shows you the number of calls that are currently in the queue. As mentioned, there's a whole range of different things that we can do now that we have actually control of the call, the history of the people that we've transacted with previously. And what I want to show you now is just really how that might look in a, in, a, in a real time environment. So you'll see here that we've got a call coming in to the Cray Family Medicine. The call has just arrived, so it's in a, a green condition. But automatically, we're already populating information about the last time this particular person called into the Cray Family Medicine and they dealt with a couple of different people within that organisation. Okay, whilst we've been talking, another call comes into another business unit that this particular operator has the capability of answering. We see the Cray pathology, the number of calls increment, uh, the wait time per call is also easily available. You'll see here reference to both keyboard and or mouse control to, to, to fully answer and control the call. Uh, as the call ages within the system, you start to see some colour colour scheme changes to indicate once again that we've got a raised priority against these calls, we've got a high call volume taking place at the moment. So just to give some visual indicators to the telephonists or the operator themselves uh, about calls that are currently waiting inside the environment. And it's very, very simple click, point and click, click to dog capability to be able to uh, easily transfer that call 
um, to the most commonly spoken person with inside the organisation. As soon as we select an op a, a destination, once again, all of the core control capabilities are presented to me as the attendant operator. Uh, that could be, as I say, to transfer directly. We could launch an, an instant message. It could be that if we were looking for one of these people who is away or out of the office, there might be an alternate number that we wish to transfer to them very, very easily. But in this instance, we've chosen to transfer, in this case, Brandt, to the person they speak to most commonly, which is Tommy. And as that transaction takes place, this is where the right-hand view comes into view. And this call will there present until such time as a subsequent action takes place. And what I mean by that is that it could well be that Tommy has walked away from his desk uh, and chosen not to take the call. So the call, based on configuration, will either return to the operator with full visibility or it'll follow the actions that are are associated with, with Tommy's uh, Skype for Business profile. So one more click of my mouse will start to see this, this call drop down. Tommy in this instance has chosen to take the call, so the call disappears from my view. And now I'm ready and available to take the next incoming call from the Cray Medicine team. All right, so that's just a quick animation of sort of how a call would be presented, answered, and then transferred, or the, the whole time maintaining great visibility uh, from the console operator's perspective. Once again, empowering them to be able to com, you know, complete their role in a, in a very, very efficient manner. So how do you get touchpoint attendant? So there's been a lot of work in this to try and make this as, as simple as we possibly can. Uh, so the website URL that you're seeing here at the top of the screen, this is, this is active now. And within that web page, you simply select download a free trial. And on selection of that, we're asking for a little bit of registration information just to help with our uh, capturing information about the prospective customer. Uh, and then once that has happened, the customer then has the ability to be able to actually download the application themselves. And from this download page, there's a number of resources and other references available to them. There's the installation process themselves. But as mentioned, this is purely a client-side application. It is a Microsoft installed application, so it's very, very simple to deploy. Uh, it can be used deployed using you know, common push technologies or simply double-click to, to run the application. It will install, and you will get access to the Touchpoint Attendant Console for a 30-day duration for a complete trial uh, of the application to just to see the benefit that tools like this bring to that particular role. In addition, the self-learning capabilities through the attendant uh, demo are also available from the download page itself. Okay, so once again, we're trying to make it very, very simple for your customers to get self-access to the application themselves, and then in the times that they need to register, that's where your involvement comes in. But once they start to use the application for the first time, there is good visibility that it is a trial period. On daily startup, they will be reminded of the number of days remaining for the current trial. Uh, through the course of the application, they'll also see this banner at the top of the uh, app, and it will also reflect the number of days that the trial period has uh, to, to, to you know, remaining. <coughs> Excuse me. So how do we price it? So Uniquely, we are delivering Touchpoint Attendant in a subscription model only, and it's actually sold in 12 monthly blocks. So pricing for the Asia region is, is in US dollars as per all of our current price books, and it is at $60 per user per month. Okay, once again, the website for all things Touchpoint Attendant is, is available here. And as Ronnie mentioned, access to these slides will be presented in the following days from this presentation. Quick note here that if there is opportunity to purchase a number of uh, clients on bulk, then yes, certainly discounts can and do apply. So once again, here's the publicly listed uh, web page, so clear visibility to customers that uh, the subscription model is there and that the per user pricing available. 
So you, you would purchase as you would normally. The customer must buy through the partner. We are not selling direct, even though there is direct visibility from the website. Uh, the customer is then directed to a partner. Uh, if they don't have a partner, we will direct them to the most appropriate partner. And then it becomes the standard sales order processing that we do right now, where you're ordering product from us. But we've tried to keep the the um, the, the, the number of people involved in and the sales order pricing is to a minimum because these are you know, such small volumes and a subscription model will try to facilitate a, a high transaction, make it very, very simple for you to be able to do that. So just to recap very, very quickly on, on Touchpoint, we released our first version back in December last year for the Microsoft Skype for Business on-premise solution. Um, we've released subsequently our Microsoft Cloud Online or Cloud PBX Skype for Business um, version when Microsoft also announced the availability of that particular technology. And the application has been written in conjunction with Microsoft. So our development teams have been working closely with them, understanding the capabilities and what will be made available in the subsequent Microsoft Skype for Business versions. And we will uh, continue to, to, to evolve the product with that co-engineering model. So we are in constant communication uh, with Microsoft, ensuring that the changes that they bring to both their on-premise and cloud solution, uh, we can maximise the benefit through the use of the Touchpoint Attendant Console. Once again, it is a client-side only application, so there is no s server required. Uh, it is a Windows only application, so Windows operating system is the only requirement. You download it from the website as, as, as noticed. And there is, as mentioned, a 30 day trial. Although to be fair, we've given you also an additional 10 day grace period uh, that serves two purposes. It gives the customer, maximizes their opportunity to purchase the uh, product even at the completion of the 30 day trial. And should they subscribe to the uh, application then 10 days prior to the expiration of the of the license, then they're also prompted to um, you know be in touch and make sure that they can continue the description at the conclusion of the first 12 month 12 month period. All right, so that sort of concludes the Touchpoint Attendant Console. Uh, as Ronnie mentioned, if, if time permits, we'll be taking questions at the conclusion of the webinar of today's webinar. And I would suggest that uh, perhaps you, you take the time now, just a moment now, to uh, make those questions uh, via the GoToMeeting uh, webinar application that you've all been using uh, to, to connect to today's webinar. So now we're going to shift our focus to Another part of the presentation uh, on a product we refer to as CP or Communications Portal. As mentioned, this is a product that has been in the in-house product speak for for some 20 years. So we have a, 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 a large reseller base and we have an even larger client base inside the Asia region. And so a number of users will be very, very familiar um, with the with the technology, but today was just really, as I say, under making sure you understand how to create more opportunities. Because what we're showing you in both of these products today, they can be used in conjunction with other uh, in-house interactive applications, or they can be used in a pure standalone mode. Okay, so that you are maximising your opportunity uh, to create more opportunities for yourself and for your for your own dealers and resellers. Okay, so communications portal in a nutshell is a self-service application. Self-service, traditionally called IVR. And why use self-service? Uh, as you can see from the slide in front of you, it really does increase the efficiency and satisfaction uh, of, of, of your customers. Because in this day and age, research strongly suggests it's what customers not only want, it's actually what customers expect. And customers are becoming more and more technically savvy. And as the statement says, there are more mobile devices exist than people. And to give you an example, here in New Zealand in my, uh, in my head office, uh, there is New Zealand has a population of some four and a half million people, uh, but we have a mobile device 
account of more than six and a half million devices. So a significant <laughs> number of devices um, for what is you know, a, a, a small population base. So yeah, people are becoming incredibly tech savvy, so the use of these devices is becoming uh, reality for, for everybody essentially. And the upshot of that is that the self-service component, once deployed, is a complete 24 by 7 experience. So whether it's a customer service component or whether it's um, transactional uh, self-service, it means it's always available. And the result of that is that the calls that are handled by the self-service, either inside business hours or outside of business hours, results in a significant reduction in calls into the contact centre itself because you're pushing calls to the self-service, freeing up to your agents to do uh, other tasks with inside the organisation. And as a result of reducing calls to your agents, the inevitable is the reduction in abandonment calls. So the service level is greatly increased, the level of customer service to the caller is greatly increased, and as a result you have a, a, you know, essentially a win-win a situation. You're offering service 24 hours a day, people can help themselves, or the callers that do need to be presented to the contact centre, you're making sure that they're the ones that are uh, only need to be answered by an agent and minimising the number of calls into that particular team. Significant piece and the, probably one of the key points of today's webinar is that the reduction in operational costs uh, is, is, a, is a key decision making factor in any use of, of a self-service technology. Yes, you can get uh, improved uh, agent productivity and there's some significant uh, cost benefits to that as well as longevity in their role, um, but essentially you are reducing the total number of calls uh, required to go to an agent, however, should the agent need to sub, uh, ultimately handle a call that has spent time in a self-service script, you're bringing the data already captured inside the self-service component of the call and presenting that real time to the agent. So the agent is well informed of what the customer's journey inside the self-service tool has been so that they can continue to assist without asking for information already captured through the self-service uh, interface already. And as a result of reducing your uh, number of calls inside of the contact centre, it basically means that you're freeing up your agent's time to re either redeploy them or to give them greater efficiencies in handling and greater levels of customer service of the calls that subsequently do uh, come through the contact centre. One of the, one of the, one of the uh, additional tangible benefits from a, uh, any, any self-service tool is that for you can offload tasks that have traditionally been done by an agent that is of either a repetitious or a menial nature, you're actually increasing the job satisfaction of the employee and the upshot of that particular statement is that you, you statistics strongly show that you get a longer tenure in your agent um, and reducing your staff turnover uh, as, a, as a result of offloading things that are some of the least desirable aspects of daily life being a contact centre agent. Coming back to my point about operational costs, there is a survey um, done out of a company called uh, Contact Babel, a US a research organisation that I'm sure a number of you will be familiar with. And they canvassed a large pool of contact centres um, over an extended period of time and the average cost based on their research indicated that for every call that comes into a US based contact center that call costs about five dollars and fifty cents okay in fact slightly slightly above that and then the research was done also across the use of self-service tools and self-service uh, as, as we will discover uh, as we go through, you know, there can be very, very simple or there can be very, very complex self-service uh, uh, components to any self-service script. So you, you have, have a, a, a range of costs, but essentially, you know, if you look at the cost per self-service call, that range from 50 to 90 cents 
whichever way you look at it, it is more than six times cheaper to handle a call through a self-service mechanism. And then you apply that logic, as I mentioned, to a seven-day, 24-hour operation, uh, you're extending your, um, your, your cost savings uh, sig significantly. So that is really one of the key, the key things about any self-service tool is understanding uh, the, the cost, actual cost savings that you'll get once you start to use the technology. So how do we do that? As I mentioned, we do that with our application called Communications Portal. It is both an inbound and outbound communications tool. Traditionally, it has been a voice-only type of uh, tool, but in more recent times, text media has been a, a, a part of any self-service, both through the inbound and outbound notifications. The use of SMS or email or surveys, for example, uh, is becoming you know, adopted in a, in a much wider um, business sense. Communications portal, I mentioned before about simple to complex, so it, it, there is a, a number of ways that you can configure a, a self-service. Traditionally, it's been very much a voice-driven uh, DTMF touch tone type experience, uh, but it need not be the case. There is industry best practice applications that support the likes of Nuance and LumenVox that give you the ability to be able to use full speech recognition or text-to-speech, speech-to-text type capabilities to make sure that you can construct a self-service tool for even the most complex of requirements. Further to that, communications portal itself has been deployed in a, in a number of different ways and that can be connected directly to the in, on-premise in-house uh, telephony platform. It could be that it is connected directly to the PSTN. It can handle all uh, types of customer interaction, so really creating that omni-channel type um, exposure through the use of SMS, email, or even traditional fax through the use of you know, hardware boards, etc., etc. And then what we're seeing significantly in more recent times is the use of what we refer to as visual IVR and specifically our mobile IVR navigator. And that's basically a, a layer above the traditional uh, IVR or self-service script that's handling the same communication but creating it through a, either a web page or a, um, uh, an application optimised for mobile devices and creating the visual um, menu structure that traditionally has been you know, through, the, through the voice type interaction. The other thing about communication portal and its key capability is that it's it's very very highly scalable. You know we have a number of deployments there in the in the hundreds and the thousands of ports, uh, and and included in that once you start to get to those um, uh, densities, then resiliency and, and high availability is a, is a is a key component. Uh, so the the design and, and uh, deployment can absolutely cater for the high availability needs of any organisation. Importantly also for Kuna Communications Portal perspective is that it is developed using our own graphical user interface. So we're not using a, a, a text based or scripting language, we're actually using an application to create visual representation of the call flow design. And that's a single tool um, irrespective of the type of communication, whether it's a text based, whether it's inbound or proactive outbound type of communication. And there's a broad set of application API integration or application APIs to, to communicate to a, a whole range of different uh, applications. But very, very importantly, as mentioned, at some point, a self-service is not going to meet the needs of, of all calls. There is times where a self-service uh, will meet the partial needs of a call, and that may well be that uh, a, a call into any self-service uh, script or queued or design needs to actually end up with a real live agent in the contact centre, and it's paramount that information or the time spent inside the uh, call flow is presented to the agent when the 
either the call flow makes the decision itself that it needs to present to an agent or the caller themselves opts out to speak to an agent. All the time spent and all the information captured and gathered is passed at a data level integration to the wider in-house interactive uh, contact centre applications. So those both being CCE or contact centre enterprise or CC slash UCB for those in the, uh, in the, in the NEC world. Uh, so all of that information is passed to the agent at the time that the agent takes the call. Okay, so very, very key to have that level of integration between the whole suite of our products. So coming back to my reference about uh, applications, so the application is called CP Studio. So CP Studio is, it uses what we refer to as building blocks to create the IVR call flow. So you'll see here uh, the call flow has a number of components to it. Um, the call flow can also be cut, paste or dragged and dropped around the screen so that we can quite easily modify or create new call flows based on existing ones as, as templates. Just to really speed up the whole deployment uh, of, of any call flow without using specialised language or specialised skill, set, skill sets to create and understand uh, traditional text or script based uh, call flow design. Importantly also is that the CP Studio has its own inbuilt visual debugger and what that basically means is that when you create your call flows you can deploy, you can test before you fully deploy. So the visual debugger will tell you where you've got endless loops or broken components within your call flow, you know, a destination that does not exist, etc. So full testing capability using the visual debugger before you look to deploy the script. So very, very easy uh, once again to develop, deploy and then understand um, you know, the, uh, the call flow itself and uh, the, the potential for success once you, make that, once you make that live. And then once something is live, use tools like CP's console application that gives you complete visibility of the components that make up a communications portal deployment and you see exactly what's taking place inside the, uh, inside the IVR at, at any one time. And irrespective of how many servers uh, are deployed to make up a single communications portal, uh, whether it's across a single site or, or multiple sites, CP, the CP console application is a single tool to view all of the activity that's taken place with inside the uh, with inside the, the self-service applications themselves or the call scripts themselves, and simply it allows quick and easy changes uh, should the case uh, be required. Uh, it is a, a user-granted privileges, so granular privileges available to restrict the administration capabilities based on the skill set of the person that you're granting access to and since it's a web-based application you can uh, you can access it across the, 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 the network from any location. Communications portal, like any tool you need reporting, so reporting is delivered from a component within our wider product the CCE for those who are familiar with it or contact centre enterprise, uh, the decision, made, decision manager uh, module is the full reporting uh, module for communications portal and that is a web based application based on crystal reports and the significance of that is it's very, very highly configurable. All right, so anything that you require, uh, you know, you, you have the ability to be able to do that through the decision maker, uh, which delivers to you the Crystal Reports uh, report writing tool. And that report on all aspects of data, so whether it's call traffic or volumes or IVR um, activity or resource usage on a particular component within any call flow, all of that data is stored all of that data is accessible uh, through the uh, decision maker, sorry, the decision manager uh, communication reporting tool. Okay, just an expansion on my comments about the visual IVR, something we've referred to as the communications portal mobile IVR. Uh, for, 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 for more detail, there is a link inside the webinar that uh, 
as we make these slides available to you, you, you can see some, some animation there about demonstrating the uh, mobile navigator itself. Uh, but in this instance, we've created a, a, a layer above a communications portal script and made it available in a number of different ways. So it could be that it's simply a mobile a web page optimized for mobiles, or it is an application itself written for the mobile. And all things that you would do via the, the phone, for example, the menu-based structure is now available to you uh, at, at an application level. Uh, so that could be, you know, um, things that would um, help you perform a transaction. It could also have integration between the backend contact center. So should you need to opt out, so to speak, of the self-service tool, you've got visual representation of what's taking place in the contact center. You could choose to interact with a contact center agent uh, based on a number of different communications channels. You could see possibly the time spent uh, sorry, the time expected to wait in the queue or the depth of the current queue, giving you, uh, you know, uh, options as to, 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 to do that now or to choose to do that later. We could represent other information about the data that you've captured to date. So lots of visual representation uh, of, of the transaction to date as well as tightly integrating to the in-house interactive contact centre applications as well. So very quickly on the mobile IVR architecture, it is available for all um, mobile operating systems, um, so Android to iOS to Windows Phone, it is using uh, a full set of uh, APIs available to you, uh, it supports all types of devices. And the application that was referenced in the previous screen is also available as a sample to help build um, mobile IVR architecture. So something there to give you a guideline or a template to help you construct your own, um, own, own call flows or self-service self scripts <clears throat> should, you, should you require it. The other significant part of the communications portal is the text media handling, uh, the emergence of, of text media handling. So as I mentioned, traditionally you've used um, self-service as a, as a voice-only type, type transaction, but more and more people are using text-based media and especially in a proactive uh, outbound or a, a notification uh, method. And there is a number of industries that are, have, have already highly adopted um, you know, the use of proactive outbound notifications. Uh, once again, I've got some information here from a US study produced by Contact Babel indicating that you know, sectors within the uh, certain industries uh, have got good deployment, some for voice, some for uh, SMS, some for recorded messages, etc. Uh, but it also shows in the, in the far right-hand column here that there is a significant number of organisations that do absolutely nothing when it comes to proactive uh, outbound notifications. So basically that's telling us that there is significant opportunity to come back on point about today's creating opportunities or create more opportunities, there is significant opportunity uh, across a whole range of different organisations to create, to create uh, some form of self-service through the use of proactive notifications, irrespective of whether they're appointment reminders or notification of deliveries or delays in deliveries or um, post-call satisfaction surveys. All of those types of things can become components of a well-designed uh, communications portal. Uh, application. Okay, so just a little bit more on proactive notifications. Uh, it keeps your customers uh, across um, either changes in the business uh, or uh, pending appointments. Um, a classic example would be in the utility space where you've got uh, potentially a power outage in a certain region of the city. Um, you know, traditionally that would cause an influx of calls from those 
people affected to the contact centre and the contact centre would find themselves repetitiously saying that there's a power outage and we will get back to you and the power expects to be out for a particular period of time and so high volume of calls over a short period of time that have essentially the same outcome and so utilities the way that they would benefit from such a a proactive notification process would be to alert all of the affected customers through you know the customer's own method of choice the, well, some customers may prefer an email some customer may prefer an SMS or an automated voice response to tell them that there has been a power in their region they will be affected the power out is expected to be of the following duration etc so in that way you're actually uh, handling the outage in a manner that will reduce the subsequent reaction to that outage which is normally a high influx of calls inside the contact centre so once again freeing up your agents to deal with uh, other normal transactions over the over the day so that's a that's a classic example in the utility space um, things like healthcare appointment reminders um, or changes to the way that you know giving someone the option to, to change an appointment if it's pending if they're, they're subsequently forgotten and as a result of doing those types of things you know you're lowering as I mentioned your inbound calls but you're also maximizing the opportunity to perform the action in the first instance and what I mean by that if you imagine that if you are notifying someone of a pending appointment that you're making sure that that person comes to the appointment so the person who is supposed to be dealing with that has no you know missed opportunity so you know you're you're, you're dealing with a higher volume of of, of uh, transaction to make sure that all all um, resource within your organization is being utilized in the most efficient manner um, and then as I say you could extend the capability to be able to uh, have the notified party to interact through the self-service tool itself. So you can imagine that an application stores customer data, be it patients or be it um, courier delivery retail sector, uh, there's been an application of choice. That application will be dealing with this layer here, which is a which is the communications portal logic for a for a call flow communications portal would send some form of of notification uh, that notification could be textual uh, it could actually then result in a reply that comes into the the contact center so a very very traditional way of, of notifying and then handling a response or it could be that we then through the use of text within the text media itself we could uh, give them the option to extend the uh, interaction by going to a mobile application or a website where they could confirm their appointment they could change their appointment uh, without the need of, of human interaction and subsequent exit of that could also come into the contact center so that's sort of traditionally how um, you know, a communications portal self-service tool would, would look what we're looking to also do in, in, in the next iteration of the communications portal application is to handle a much in a much more intelligent manner. So it could also be that um, you could, you know, handle your replies. Oops, apologies, handle your replies. But the use of third-party uh, automation tools like Microsoft's Lewis and IBM's Watson uh, interactions that we have already undertaken and in fact developed in the face for the Microsoft Lewis uh, application uh, that starts to bring you know, automation into the, um, the, re the reply component of any proactive proactive notification and then subsequent that the uh, artificial intelligence could then hand off to the contact center through once again the preferred mechanism for contacting the agent or for contacting the, the customer themselves so that will be the next iteration of the communications portal we are developing interfaces to industry standard uh, artificial intelligence components or often referred to as bots and the first component will be MS Lewis or Microsoft Lewis, uh, but we're also investigating tools like uh, IBM Watson. But there is a range of other tools out there, uh, and that just becomes another 
uh, interface or another API to um, to those particular opportunities. So you know, we'd, we'd welcome opportunities that uh, would uh, give us the ability to be able to talk to other industry standard artificial intelligence applications out there in the marketplace. Okay. So in in in, in summary, um, cons communications portal is a single framework for managing all forms of self-service. Uh, be that through uh, voice interactions with complexities such as speech recognition, text-to-speech. Uh, it gives you the ability to be able to create the call flows using a very graphical user interface, simplifying the design, and then extends the capability from a traditional voice-based media interaction to a text-based one. And at that text could be, as mentioned, SMS or fax or email, uh, satisfaction surveys, Accenture, etc. And then passing that on to um, uh, artificial intelligence type components as well. But the, the, at, the, at the end, um, irrespective of the uh, communication type, whether it's um, text or voice, the if the final destination of the call needs to sit with the contact centre, then it, as I said, is, is paramount that the uh, data captured through the duration of the self-service component of the call um, is is presented to the contact centre agent, so they are able uh, to quickly handle the uh, the reason that the uh, the, the self-service tool could could not handle the, the the complete request. So making sure the the contact centre person has all the information available to them, and that could include um, information sourced from from third-party sources. Uh, it could include you know or, or remove the need for reauthentication because all that information is passed to the contact centre person themselves. Oops, excuse me, wrong wrong click there. Uh, Apologies, I've just clicked on the wrong button. Let me just get back to my slide here. Okay, so yes, so the, the ultimately the destination could be the contact centre, but all that information uh, will, will, will flow through from the previous um, communication portal activity. Um, so um, you know that is that is the the, the key component or the key, key to any interaction between self-service and contact centre technology. Now, for some, you'll be very familiar with the uh, communications portal pricing structure. Uh, it is sold in a, in a, in a port um, licensing model. Um, the mobile IVR is sold by a number of channels, so not so much a port, by the number of simultaneous transactions. Outbound notifications is available in, in bundles of software channels, plus what we refer to as hardware channels. Uh, the development tool component uh, is sold as a part of the uh, suite or bundled, uh, and that and that tool is available to you as the partner, uh, to your partner, you, your own uh, dealers or channel, or even to the customer themselves if if they have the necessary capability to be able to develop or the desire to develop their own uh, call flow scripts. So the choice is absolutely yours. Uh, or the development tool may just be part of. Um, you know your own intellectual property, and you are just presenting to the end user the fully completed scripts, and any changes or modifications that are required become the domain of of, of you as the uh, the ultimate owner of the development tool. And from a more traditional stance, there's, there's, there's physical ports too for um, some of the uh, legacy type uh, per port technologies that exist, analog devices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that just about concludes what we wanted to talk to you today. Hopefully you've got some information there and something to take away and think about as to how to create more opportunities inside your own customer base, your own reseller base. Um, but before we perhaps go to questions, I just want to bring your attention to some more resources that are available to you that will um, reiterate the points that have been made in today's presentation. Uh, there is absolutely some, some videos available on our website here, uh, links as, as is shown. Uh, there is also our partner portal, which if you're not 
part of that partner portal, I would greatly encourage your participation. It's a very, very simple thing to facilitate. Uh, if you're not registered, there is a registration from that uh, web page, and all of the information that we capture um, that is um, pertinent to all of the products, not just the two that I've been talking about today, all of our products uh, are available to you via that, uh, via that partner portal. Okay, so that concludes my piece of the presentation. I hope that was uh, uh, meaningful and that you've got a, uh, some ideas as to how to create more opportunities. And over to you now, Ronnie. Uh, hi, thank you very much, Matt. Um, okay, so we have actually some my exit 14 minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, as mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, so we'll be taking some questions now. As a reminder, so please continue to type all your questions in the chat panes in the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, to start off, uh, let me start with a few that is coming in during the presentations. The first one is, um, do you believe, Matt, do you believe that the non-Microsoft partners can uh, offer touch point attendance? Yeah, yeah, good question, Ronnie, um, and I'm glad someone's asked that one, actually, because yeah, I, I strongly agree that um, Touchpoint Attendant Console can be uh, a product offering to our entire uh, partner base, and the reason for that is that uh, gone are the days where one size fits all. You've got a... Um, You've got so many tools available to an organisation that uh, you need to be able to maximise your opportunity to be able to deliver tools that uh, different areas of any organisation would re would require. Um, and customer is is a hard thing to capture. Um, so you want to make sure that you have the ability to capture as many as you can and through the use of something as simple as the uh, attending console, which is a, a very low cost or very low entry point, it, it gives you the opportunity to really to create more opportunities within that customer because we all know that customers are hard to get and once you've got them, you know, it's, it's, it's imperative that you hang on to them for, you know, the maximum length of time and the more that you can show as a, as a product offering, uh, the more likelihood of you keeping that customer, the more likelihood you have of expanding your technology, not just NGS Interactive technology, but hopefully that as well, but expanding that technology inside of the customer. So yes, I'd encourage uh, all of our partners to look at their client base uh, and the changes within you know the customers. People do things sometimes uh, on mass, or sometimes they do them in phases. So, yeah, I, I would encourage them to think about uh, all the applications that we can make available to them to make sure that they have, you know, uh, significant reason to keep communicating with their existing customer base, and more importantly, with with, with new customers uh, to make them customers of their own. So, absolutely, yes, I, I would say that um, Touchpoint Attendant is for people who have traditionally not thought about Microsoft as a uh, one of their current telephony platforms, most definitely. Hi, right, thanks. Uh, thanks, Matt. So, in summary, uh, you do not need to be a Microsoft partner to sell the uh, Touchpoint Attendance. So, as long as you, your customers is running on Microsoft Skype, uh, for business platforms and they are keen to, to look into the touch point attendance, uh, any of the partners can go ahead and sell. Okay. Uh, Absolutely. I think, yes. Due to time constraints, uh, what we will do is that we will answer one last question before we end. So uh, another question uh, to Matt is what do you see as the biggest obstacles for organizations when it comes to introducing self-service to the customer's experience options? Yeah, uh, another good question. Um, and often it's because the customer themselves hasn't really realized that they have a self-service opportunity. Um, and, it, and it takes conversation with the likes of an educated partner to really educate them and into what self-service uh, the capabilities of, of, of a good self-service um, component could be. And as mentioned, that could be an inbound experience, uh, that, that, that could be an outbound experience. Um, and it doesn't need to be 
um, complex. Um, some, sometimes a, another barrier is that someone thinks that the, the self-service needs to be something that is for uh, you know highly complex design. When the reality is is that some of our more successful recent communications portal deployments have been meeting a very very specific need. Um, so it doesn't need to be a wide ranging. Um, self-service capability, it might just need to be that you identify a, a, a need around something that is very repetitious um, and thus minimising you know, the, the agent's to some degree dissatisfaction with having to deal with repetitious tasks or very menial tasks that takes a little bit of time but um, something that is done very, very frequently. So as I mentioned, some of our, our more recent very successful um, deployments have been uh, about facilitating something that is, in reality, a very basic, a basic task, but it was a very high volume task. And I can give you an example of a, a university where um, most semesters, or beginning of semesters, or even weekends, there is a high call volume into the IT service desk of the university asking for student uh, password reset because for whatever reasons they've forgotten. And so there was an absolute need identified that we could construct a communications portal self-service to be able to um, take all of those calls and facilitate automation of that password reset facility and therefore freeing up the time of the IT service desk to deal with real live impacting uh, calls into that particular team. So very, very simple um, but very, very effective and the end result was that it reduced a significant amount of inbound calls to the, to the contact centre. So the point there being it doesn't need to be complex, uh, it just needs someone to identify it and then expand on that thinking and show the value of, of doing that to, to any organisation, no matter how big or how small or how complex or how simple. Okay, thanks Matt. Uh, okay, thank you everyone for your questions. I do see a few more waiting, but um, due to time's uh, constraints, uh, we may have to stop the sessions. Uh, if we did not get the opportunity to address your questions, uh, we will make sure we will follow up with you personally to answer any questions you may have. Uh, or you could actually, uh, for those who have my email address, you could actually send your questions to me direct uh, and I will try to get uh, it answers uh, back to you as soon as possible. Uh, once again, thanks everyone. Uh, that concludes today's webinar. Uh, Later this week, you will be getting a link from us uh, with a link to the recording as well as to further research.